going to look at an example of solving a quadratic uh, equation. So if you recall, quadratic equations, they have a, a squared on your variable. And they fit a pattern. If we follow this in descending order, we could have an x squared with a coefficient and an x term with a coefficient and a constant by itself. We don't have to have all three of them, but there will be a squared for it to be a quadratic. Visually, quadratics are parabolas. And so when we solve a quadratic setting at the zero, what we're trying to find are the roots of the quadratic, or the x-intercepts, for example. They can curve up or down, they're absolutely symmetric, we want to see where they cross. They might only cross at a single place. Or they could cross not at all. So we could have three kinds of solutions. No solution, one solution, or two solutions. If it doesn't cross, that gets into imaginary roots. So to solve this one, we are going to try to factor a trinomial. So I we're using a number in front of the x, so there's a little more for us to do on a problem like this. So we want to first multiply the coefficient of your squared term with your constant term. 3 times 5, that gives us 15. So now we need to factor 15 to find numbers that make 6. So that should be pretty apparent in what we have. How many ways are there to factor a 15? We could have a 1 and a 15, or a 3 and a 5. That's really the only numbers that make a 15. Now because this is positive, there are two ways that we could make this uh, 15. Uh, for, for a number to be positive, either both could be positive or both could be negative. So that would create two sets of numbers that you could think of. We have both positive and both negative. And we can tell by looking at this which set we need. So since this is negative, uh, with this being plus, we're looking at these numbers as a sum. If this were negative, we would be looking for a difference. So with the sum, the possible outcomes we're getting, we can get a 16, an 8, a negative 16, or a negative 8. These are the sums that the factors of 16 will make. So to make a negative 16, I need to use a negative 1 and a negative 15. So these are the x terms. I'm going to do this in a method that's very um, systematic. So it'll track everything for us. So I'm going to copy our problem and I'm going to replace the negative 16 x with a negative x and a negative 15 x. So I was just considering numbers here. These all have x's for them to add up to make 16 x. So we have 3 x squared minus x minus 15 x. It doesn't matter. It absolutely does not matter the order that I put these numbers in. And the problem will solve differently, but the result will be the same. Now I can use a technique called factor by grouping, where I just look at these two numbers and say, what do these have in common? Uh, I can pull an x out. So if I divide each by an x, what do I have left? I have 3x, and here I have a 1. Now I look at the remaining two terms, 
what do they have in common? I can pull out a 5. So I'm going to pull out a 5 that leaves me with a negative 3 x and a plus 1. These almost match. So there's one trick that I can use to make the match. I can pull out a negative from these two. They both have a negative in common because 1 is negative 1 times negative 1. So you can actually pull a negative out of any positive. The negative here is apparent that I could pull that out. So if I pull out the negative, so I'm going to put that with a 5. So in this case I'm actually factoring out a negative 5 from where I, where I started. That gives me 3x minus 1. Now these factors match. When factors match, you can factor them out. And 3x minus 1 is a common factor to both of these terms. So if I divide each by 3x minus 1, what's, free, what's left here is an x, and what's left here is a negative 5. So now my quadratic is factored into 3x minus 1 and x minus 5. So from here, I set each of these factors equal to 0 to find out what my roots are going to be. And it's just algebra at this point that we do. Basic algebra. So we get x by itself. We're subtracting 1. What's the opposite of subtracting 1? It's adding 1. So I move my 1 over or I add 1 to both sides, however you want to think about it. So 3x equals 1. And to get x by itself, I'm multiplying these two when numbers are written side by side, when the number next door variable, the operation is multiplication. So to undo multiplication, I divide. So I divide both sides by 3. So here we learn x equals 1 third. There's one of our roots. Uh, for the second one, we have x minus 5. This is a simpler problem. What minus 5 is 0? Or think of adding 5 to both sides. So x equals 5. So our two solutions are x equals 1 third and x equals 5. And we solve this by a technique of factoring trinomials through uh, factoring by grouping.